Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about removing the rudder post from the steel trawler and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Last week we looked at how stuck this rudder post is. So people made some great suggestions. I'll tell you a bit more about what I did try and then I'll tell you what we're gonna try now. The question about whether it's locked in with some sort of circlip is an entirely valid one. I can't see anything, but doesn't mean it's not there. There doesn't seem to be any kind of circlip at the top, not that I can see yet anyway. But a suggestion was try pushing it up, see if that exposes some sort of collet that can be removed that'll allow it to go down. Possibility, so I think that's what I'm gonna start with. I got a little four ton bottle jack for trying to push it up. So now I've just got to find some sort of extension to get me between the ground and the bottle jack or vice versa. I've cut a bit of gal pipe to the right length. It's not the thickest pipe in the world, but we'll see what happens. It's actually lifting the boat off the stands. On the upside, it nicely flared the end of the pipe to fit over the top of the ram, so at least it wasn't going to slip off. So there's good news and bad news with regards to the tools we need that I ordered. The bad news is that the three phase to 15 amp arrived, the adapter arrived, but it turns out that this is a 32 amp three phase socket, which is, or plug, which is what I'm used to. And it turns out that it's actually a 20 amp socket here, which is a different plug. So it's the wrong one. This is doubly annoying because what I want to do next is weld a long bar onto this flange here so I can use it to twist the rudder post. I did have the steering reconnected at one point, had lubricant, had the little porter pack in there and it was turning the wheel, the helm, which was giving it a little bit of movement. But the downside to that is if it does go, it's not a ram that can move, it's only in one plane which means that it would only work until it dropped a certain amount, then I'd have to disconnect it anyway. So why not just weld the bar on here, somebody can rotate it while I'm hammering up the top. All right, there was a lot of conversation about whether the post goes in from the top or below. We'll go up the top and I'll show you what I'm thinking there. So on the last video, there were two comments that I think kind of uh, argue that this does come up from below. One of them was, the flange really can't be welded on afterwards. It needs to be done on a bench, probably milled flat and made perfectly perpendicular so it doesn't bind as it turns. The other is that if the rudder post was pushed down and then the flange was welded on, it would actually have to be pushed all the way down so that this yoke could go on, which means that if it is tapered and it stops at a certain point, it would never drop low enough for this yoke to clear the deckhead here particularly given I've cut some of it off. So I think that's a reasonably compelling argument that it was pushed from below up. Now, because at an absolute minimum, I'm gonna be replacing the rudder post, maybe even the whole tube, as a few people suggested, just cut it out, start again, which is on the cards. But before I, you know, go to that extreme, I am gonna cut this rudder post lower, which will allow me to get the yoke off, which will then allow me to put a bit of a collar around here and we'll get our ATF and acetone mix in here. So I'm going to do that first, then if that doesn't work, we'll cut the whole thing out. Sorry I can't hold the camera and do all this and show you, but knocked the key out with a chisel and a hammer, cleaned this up with a wire wheel and a drill, and then chamfered the top here with the grinder. Now I'm going to put a sleeve over here and fill it up with the ATF acetone mix. There we go, sleeve on, hose clamp tight around it, and plenty of space here now to fill with oil acetone and let it gravity feed down. All right, time to mix up the holy trinity of ATF Coopers and acetone, then we'll pour it into that sleeve. All right, it's pretty full. I'm just gonna let that sit for a day or two. I'm going to let that sit overnight at least, but there is a kind of a phase two to my cunning plan. So what I'll do is weld the bar on and rotate that while the fluid's there. But this sleeve, this aluminium tube, 
is the same diameter as the inside of that silicon tube. So I can put this in, put a second hose clamp here, and then I can actually weld a thick bit of aluminium to the top here, drill it, tap it, put a neato fitting, and apply compressed air to the top here to force the ATF and acetone down through the tube. Before I said there was good news and bad news with the ordering, and the good news is the oxy torch has arrived. Because pushing the rudder post up doesn't seem to be working at all, what I'm going to do is cut the flange off the bottom, which will allow me to look up into the tube and see whether there's any sort of packing or anything in there that I can get out to make it freer. So hopefully now you can see how quickly the rudder post goes back up to its full width again. What I'm going to do now though is get the needle gun and just chip away here, see what we see. Looks like we've got steel here and then probably some sort of nylon bushing here or a bearing. So looking up now you can see this material's chewed very easily so I'd say this is some sort of soft nylon bushing but I think what's happened is the tubes corroded it's made the metal swell and now the bushings really gripping hard against this shaft it's probably also corroded so I think we're going to let the acetone do its job I don't see any evidence of a threaded locking mechanism circlet anything I'll give it a squirt from this side just so I feel like I'm doing something even though I doubt it's going to make the slightest bit of difference to get around this problem not having 15 amp power yet, I went down to Bunnings and bought one of these little 10 amp welders. I don't think it's going to be great for doing big jobs, but it's certainly going to be handy for doing bits and pieces. The other thing about this is it's nice and small so it can fit in your handbag in case you break a nail. Obviously I'm going to have to cut the stuck welding rod off before it's ready to hammer in, but other than that, good to go. Back at the boat I started grinding the paint off a bit of square stock metal so that I could weld it onto the bottom of the rudder post and we could use that to rotate the rudder post while we were heating it and, and getting the oil down inside it. I used this instead of using the actual helm of the boat because the helm's fixed in one plane whereas this sort of temporary tiller will be able to drop down with the rudder post will be able to keep moving as we go. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's it. The reason I got this one it's purely that I could knew then I could weld anywhere because it's just 10 amp normal mm. socket. It's the hottest part at the end of the yeah. The wipe is the hottest part. That's yep. the way where you see it's not hissing too much. Yeah, gotcha. But when you're cutting, you do use less air. Oh, okay. If you're trying to heat so it doesn't yeah. get Now what I'm going to do is drill into this bushing here. I presume it's some sort of nylon bushing rather than a packing because there's no threaded section to sort of compress it at all. But I'm going to drill into it and see if I can pull any of it out. Yeah. Move it all? Yeah. It moved a big lot that last hit. Did it? Alright. How about we both do it? It's not lifting the boat, so. No. I think I pushed it all up then. Coming out, Jeff. Yep. Yeah. Every time, at least 10 mil. Yeah. Still coming. Oh, mate, it's falling out. It's falling out now. Yeah. 
Yeah, it drops about 20 centimetres then. I can see the oil now. I can see the oil now, the ATF coming through. <laughs> so really pleased it's out now obviously I need to go and inspect the tube clean that up a little bit and then probably get a puller and pull the bearing out from the top but I'll look at that tomorrow what I will do now though is give you a closer look at the rudder post itself you can see here this bevel section is still intact except for one bit here where it was sticking out a bit but I think maybe that might have happened once it went through the top bearing and then because the bushing was out there was plenty of clearance for even that little bit of mushroom tube to come all the way out. There is a little bit of a taper here but it's not particularly uniform. I've got a funny feeling it maybe is actually just the tube wearing away from where the bushing was. I presume the bushing was about out here there was a bit more of it I broke off then we got to this eaten part of the tube which made it look thinner than the flange here what I'll do quickly is just go over to the wire wheel and give this section a bit of a clean up so we can see what's going on with it oh and people are asking what's happening in the workshop I've moved pretty much everything home now so toolboxes and everything so this is where we'll be doing all the vids from now on if they're not on the boat You can see around here what looks like a little step down in the shaft diameter, but I don't think it is. If you lay an edge across it, admittedly this is very short, it's actually more of a depression here where it's worn on the edge of the bushing. You come round to this side and it's almost completely flat, like this. So I think what this is, is simply where, from where the rudder post's been turning in the bushing like that. What this bushing was made out of, I don't know. Looks like it's got a kind of a cloth weave type pattern through which you can see. And then when you look end on, it's quite sort of fibrous. You can see here when I was drilling this out, I was kind of favoring the side of the rudder post itself because this is being replaced and the tube's being kept. What I'll do though is take the remnants up to a fabrication shop and get them to make a new one up. I don't think it'll be rocket science, but I don't have the metal stock and all that kind of thing, so I'll get a quote anyway. The big question for me now, and I'd be interested to hear people's opinions, is do I get a mild steel one made up, as this one is, or do I get a stainless steel one made up? This got badly eaten because the rudder itself is stainless steel. I don't like the idea of adding even more stainless steel to the boat, but if they're kind of insulated in these bushings and bearings, and the rudder itself is stainless, maybe it's good to keep that whole unit as a stainless steel unit. Anyway, interested to hear people's thoughts on that before I do get it made up. All right, plenty of jobs to do now. Done my first little bit of cutting with the oxy torch, so I'm starting to feel more comfortable with that. Definitely gonna use that to get that rubbing strip off. People saying, you know, it'll just be so quick you won't know yourself, which is great. But I'm also gonna cut that door in the side, and I also plan to mount a crane. I'll show you that. So forever in a day I've had one of these little folding hydraulic engine cranes, it's got a little winch on it but it's also got a hydraulic ram and I've always had a spare one sitting under the house thinking I would put one at the top of the stairs and then one at the bottom of the stairs. I never put the one for the bottom of the steps in though, it's been sitting under the house still in its box. So I'm going to put this on the deck. This will allow me to lift some tools from the ground up onto the deck through the hatch. It'll allow me to lift things out of the water once the boat's launched again and I'm hoping it'll allow me to lift the motor you know the GM out of the boat onto the deck so that I can access the hull below the motor which I think needs some attention. So a couple of things I need to do one is figure out whether I'm going to try and make a wedge to keep the crane level because the deck slopes so if I weld it straight to the deck it's going to be a bit of an angle obviously that angle will change as it swings and as the boat rocks but I still think it should start as close to theoretical level as possible. My next job is to remove the propeller shaft I think that's going to be much easier than the rudder post because it's got a bit of play in it, you know, I can wriggle it around, it rotates easily, so I think getting the flange that mates with the gearbox off the end might be tricky, but getting the shaft itself out should be pretty straightforward. 
Uh, before we wrap up, I just want to say a big thank you to all the people who have donated on Patreon. That's helped pay this fortnight's rent to be on the stand completely, and that's really appreciated, so thank you very much. Over the weekend, I'm going to set a tub up for doing some electrolysis, so we should have another video before next week. Alright, catch you then. See ya.